Hello everyone. So in this video, I will be explaining you about how many ATPs that you are going to get on glycogen degradation. As you all know, glycogen is stored in the liver and that glycogen is meant for blood glucose maintenance whereas the glycogen that is stored in the skeletal muscle and other tissues and the purpose of very purpose of that glycogen is for the energy needs of the tissue. So we are going to calculate here how many ATPs that you are going to get from such glycogen which is there in the other tissues other than uh, liver. Okay. So when the glycogen degradation is going on during say in the skeletal muscle during muscle, mu muscular activity. So glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate here and that job is done by glycogen phosphorylase. So once you get glucose 1-phosphate that glucose 1-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 6-phosphate. For the, the reason for this is glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme is absent in skeletal muscle and other tissues. It is only present in the liver that is why liver is able to make glucose from glycogen but not other tissues. That is why like skeletal muscle which do not have glucose 6-phosphatase. So what it does it is going to convert glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. Note that. To convert glucose 1 phosphate into glucose 6 phosphate or fructose 6 phosphate, we have not spent any ATP here. Unlike in glycolysis, so glycolysis is conversion of glucose into glucose 6 phosphate. We are going to use one ATP there. Whereas here, you got glucose 6 phosphate without spending any ATP because glycogen degradation it incorporates inorganic phosphate done by glycogen phosphorylase enzyme, and that phosphate is found at sixth position of glucose. Anyway, glucose 6-phosphate converted to fructose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-biphosphate and in this time you are using 1 ATP here. So I am writing 1 ATP that is minus 1 ATP there. So you are consuming 1 ATP there. Now fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is converted to two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. For our convenience, I have write, written two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now these two molecules of glycerol D8 3 phosphate converted to two molecules of 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate. During this time you are going to generate NADH plus H plus two molecules of NADH plus H plus. So for, for the convenience so whatever that we generate I am going to write it in blue color. So let me change the color here. So two NADH plus 2H plus. You are going to get 2 NADH plus 2H plus molecule there and of course you are going to consume 2 molecules of NAD plus. 2 molecules of NAD plus is consumed here done by glycerol D8,3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate going into 2 molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate you are going to generate 2 molecules of ATP here. So 2 ATPs are released. 2 ATPs are coming out of that reaction. Now 2 molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate converted to 2 molecules of 2 phosphoglycerate, no energetics there and 2 molecules of 2 phosphoglycerate into 2 molecules of phosphoenol pyruvate, no energy coming from there. Whereas 2 phosphoenol pyruvate into 2 pyruvate molecules, you are going to gain 2 more ATPs at this stage. So 2 more ATPs are gained here. Now you got 2 pyruvate molecules. These 2 pyruvate molecules if the muscle has got sufficient oxygen like initial activity of muscle contraction so we have sufficient oxygen so during that time those two pyruvates will get into mitochondrial matrix and they will be converted into two acetyl CoA molecules that's done by pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex now during that time you are going to get two more a NADH plus H plus two NADH plus two H plus molecules you are going to get here now two acetyl CoA molecules they will undergo two TCA cycle, two individual TCA cycle and in each TCA cycle you are going to get 10 ATPs per acetyl CoA molecule. So you get 10 ATPs in one, uh, one TCA cycle, one acetyl CoA, another 10 ATPs, another TCA cycle, another acetyl CoA oxidized. Okay. Now since we are talking about aerobic condition and the cell has got mitochondria here, sufficient oxygen is present. So during that time what happens, your 2 NADH plus H plus 
that are produced at glycerol D8-3-phosphate dehydrogenase reaction, they will be taken into the mitochondrial matrix by a shuttle mechanism. Now there are two shuttle mechanisms. One is glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism which is taking NADH plus H plus from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria as FADH2. So it means 2 NADH plus H plus will be taken in as 2 FADH2. So these two FADH2 are worth, they are 3 ATPs there. Each FADH2 is worth 1.5 ATP. So three, 2 FADH2 here worth 3 ATP. And so it means 2 NADH plus 2 H plus will be worth 3 ATP here. 3 ATPs and that is through glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. That is glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism that is worth 3 ATPs. If the cell uses malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, so in a malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, the NADH plus H plus from cytoplasm is taken into mitochondria by uh, as NADH plus H plus. So NADH plus H plus is taken in as NADH plus H plus and 1 NADH plus H plus in the electron transport chain it is worth 2.5 ATPs. Now you have 2 NADH going in as NADH so they will be worth 5 ATPs there. So 5 ATPs, all right, 5 ATPs here and that is through malate aspartate shuttle mechanism. So if it is glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism you have 3 ATPs coming from NADH plus H plus. If it is malate aspartate shuttle mechanism you have 5 ATPs coming from NADH plus H plus. By default, so it is glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism which is preferred over malate aspartate shuttle mechanism unless if it is mentioned. Like in neurons, it, there may be malate aspartate shuttle mechanism going on whereas majority of other cells, they use glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. So what I will do is, I am going to con, uh, consider glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism for our calculation, initial calculation and later we will change into malate aspartate and see how many number of ATPs we get. Now, let's calculate all those ATPs and here 2 NADH plus H plus already they are there in the mitochondrial matrix so it means they are worth 5 ATPs here. This is worth 5 ATPs. So now let, let's calculate total number uh, that is an aerobic condition. Aerobic condition so how many ATPs that you get here. So initially you consumed one ATP there so whereas you have produced two ATPs at this stage, two ATPs at this stage so that is four ATPs and then you have five ATPs here so that is nine ATPs then 10 plus 10 20 so there are 29 ATPs 29 plus 3 ATP here so that means you have 32 ATPs so 32 ATPs you got here. 32 ATPs and you need to take out one ATP from that 32 total number. So again I will calculate. So you have consumed one ATP, we have not yet taken out whereas here you produced two ATPs, two ATPs there are four, four plus five, nine ATPs plus 20 here, 10 plus 10, 20. So there are 29 ATPs and then glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism you have three ATPs so 29 plus 3, 32. Okay, so 32 minus 1 here. So 32 minus 1 ATP because 1 ATP you have consumed here. So your total number will be 31 ATPs. And these 31 ATPs will be, you are going to get under glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. If your cell is using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism, you are going to get total 31 number by default. That's what we use. Just in case if the malate aspartate shuttle mechanism is used, so the number will be like this. 2 ATPs, then 2 ATPs that is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 20 is 29, 29 plus 5 here. So that will be 34, 29 plus 5, 34 ATPs. So total you have 34 ATPs there. So 34 here, 34 ATPs, but you have to take out 1 ATP from it. That is because we have used it initially and so your net number will be 33 ATPs, 33. So with the malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, that is malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, your total number of ATPs that are coming from glycogen degradation into 1 glucose phosphate, uh, glucose 1 phosphate all the way into TCO cycle, you are going to get either 31 ATPs 
or 33 ATPs. 31 in the presence of visceral phosphate shuttle mechanism, 33 in the presence of malate aspartate shuttle mechanism. Now let's see what will happen if the glycogen degradation is going on under anaerobic condition. If there is no sufficient oxygen available. As you all know under anaerobic situation, your pyruvate here, glycolysis is going on and pyruvate is diverted into lactate formation because in anaerobic glycolysis there will be need of NAD+. NAD+, need to be continuously generated and also oxygen is insufficient here so electron transport chain it won't be going on sufficiently so TCA cycle will be decreased because of that you are diverting pyruvate into lactate it means your NADH plus H plus which is produced here it will be taken into this reaction here and it will release NAD plus and NAD plus will come back into glycerol D8 3 phosphate dehydrogenase reaction so as you can see here glycerol D8 3 phosphate dehydrogenase produces NADH plus H plus same NADH plus H plus in the cytoplasm will be used by lactate dehydrogenase enzyme and is going to generate pyruvate into lactate and release NAD plus those NAD plus can re-enter into glycolysis and continue the glycolysis. Now what's the gain with this? The gain is you are produ producing two ATPs here at substrate level phosphorylation and two more ATPs here at substrate level phosphorylation. It means you have under anaerobic situation, anaerobic condition. So you have produced four ATPs at substrate level and you have consumed only one ATP there. So there will be only one ATP consumed. So net ATP generation now it will be three. Three net ATPs are generated under an aerobic condition. So glycogen degradation under aerobic condition either it will give 31 or 33 ATPs whereas under anaerobic condition it will give you three ATPs. Okay. So this is all about energetics or energy derived from glycogen under different conditions that is in aerobic condition using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism or malate aspartate shuttle mechanism or under anaerobic condition when the pyruvate is diverted into lactate formation. I hope this video has helped you to understand how many ATPs are coming from glycogen degradation into glucose 1 phosphate. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.